His name is Moses Masika. His father, his father's name is Wetangula. He has a younger brother called Timothy Wanyonyi Masika. I'll tell you why his brother, who is the MP for Westlands, does not use the name Wetangula later. The earliest time I came to notice him was around 1979-80, when he was a student of the Nairobi University Law School. Uh, the university students, Nairobi University was the only university, and the students used to riot and strike every now and then. There is one time when four students from the law school did not agree with the, whatever the students were uh, striking, were going on strike. I believe as a human being, they say that only Siamese twins are the ones who are constantly together. The fact that you agree with everything with somebody or disagree with everything with somebody shows that there is something wrong with that. You have to agree with some things and you have to disagree with some things. You can dis agree uh, emotionally or you can disagree gently. And you can also agree emotionally and you can even agree gently. So it is right and it is an intellectual positive if you reach somewhere where you, you tend to agree on issues or you tend to not agree on issues. That is very normal. So these four students did not agree and to me the reasons they gave were genuine. They were genuine that we are few but we don't agree on the following matters. They went to a Nation House. Nation House is near Globe Cinema. There is another, another roundabout if you go up a bit where I think that house is still there where Nation used to be before they before they moved to nation center they went there and told the daily nation that they did not want their identity to be known but they gave their reasons their reasons which were well researched well thought out the nation daily nation accepted not to publish their names so they say just when they published they said four students came and those four students were one was Moses Masika, the other one was PLO Lumumba, the other one was Justin Bundi Muturi, former speaker, now the AG, and the fourth one I have forgotten. But what the Daily Nation made a mistake was that after they had given their whatever, because I've been to, any, I've been to Nation Media Center along Kimathi Street, Why, once they are through with you, they take you out to see how they say this is now where the radio station is, this is where we do this. But those days it used to be only printing. So they were taken and a picture was taken of them. So there was no need of hiding their names when their picture was there. The other students went, entered into their rooms, burnt everything. I don't know whether they even burnt certificates. And that is the first time that Wetangula or Moses Masika comes into focus. Then he started a law firm. And when he started a law firm, that was around 1981, the law firm was so low that uh, many, many customers avoided it. In, that is any business that you start when it is fresh, you have challenges. Then the August coup of 1982 came and these people were being court-martialed in Langata. When they were being court-martialed in Langata, no lawyer wanted to appear for them because they thought they'd be blacklisted but um, Moses Masika Wetangula offered himself you see there was a <laughs> even if the government uh, uh, shortly uh, even if the government notices your company Ikonini after all Ikonini and after all you will uh, you don't have business you see those with the business are the ones who are supposed to over isn't it but because of his boldness, arguing, a case, arguing cases that everybody knew was hopeless, uh, hopeless not in the fact or whatever, but it's hopeless that in a dictatorship, 
trying to to defend uh, those who are anti-government or who are deemed to be anti-government, uh, knowing very well what had happened to Kina Haminwa and Kina Muite and so on, that was very bold. And Kanu admired him and Kanu recruited him. He stayed for a long time being the Kanu insider. That is why even when multipartism came, he was nominated as a Kanu member. Let's go back to issues of his law firm. His brother, uh, Timothy, Mas uh, Timothy Wanyonyi Ohwa Masik, oh, Ohwa Wetangula. Timothy Wanyonyi Ohwa Wetangula also went through the law school and his brother employed him as a lawyer in his law firm. Uh, on his own part, and you can see even up to today, Timothy Wanyonyi is a bright a lawyer and equally a bright politician but uh, I've faced such problems in the police force is that if you are related to somebody prominent in your field people don't see that they just see your last name so there was a lot of tension that uh, Masika was giving his brother good cases and giving them bad cases uh, it even happened when he was shot by car robbers, car jackers, that uh, those things happened. And when he recovered, he decided to start his own law firm and avoid the name Wetangula. That is why, you know, everybody knew that Wetangula is Masika. So he saw that if he uses the name Wetangula, still will be connected to Masika. Uh, this is what happened. Some people tried to carjack him and shot him and paralyzed him for life. That one also happened to Sami Loshore. Sami Loshore, we used to work with him in special branch. He was a chief inspector but joined politics. Somewhere along Outer Ring Road, Sami Loshore was shot and he faced the same thing. Then Wetangula ended up in Ford, Kenya. He's ending up in Ford, Kenya. To me, it has more to do with the fact that uh, being in Bukusuland and being in any other party may be a challenge. So he ended up being in, uh, and he ended up being in uh, Ford, uh, Ford, Kenya. And uh, he he's a good chess player. He's a good chess player because well, let us go back to the time of NASA. NASA had four principles. NASA had four principles, uh, two Luhias and one Luo and one Mukamba. So when it came to uh, selecting somebody to run for the presidential, Raila was made the presidential candidate. And, uh, and um, uh, Kalonzo Musioka was the running mate. Although some Luhias, including uh, yours faithfully, we were saying, how can Luya be composed of half the summit, but get nothing? But uh, Wetangula knew what he was doing. Uh, he went for the surest seat. He said that he was going to contest the Bungoma senatorial seat. And uh, Musalia Mudavadi contested for no seat because he was timing the seat of prime cabinet secretary as for uh, Raila and uh, Kalonzo Musioka their fate was to be determined by the ballot so him if they were whether they were to win or not he was to be the leader the the leader if it if they were to form the majority in senate he was to be the leader of the majority and if they were to form the minority he was to be the leader of minority showing that of all the four people, Raila for presidency, Kalozo for deputy president, Musalia Mudavadi for prime cabinet secretary, his was the surest bet because him getting elected as the senator for Bungoma was more sure than those three. And again, whether the, as, uh, whether the NASA will form 
uh, the majority or minority, he still was to be a leader of whatever formation it will come. Then it happened that way. Uh, it reached a time when, you see, for him to step down for presidential or deputy presidential, it was on assurance, was on assurance that uh, he was to be given leader of the political party, but when of, of the coalition in Senate. And he did that for some time, until a time when reached, when he was short-charged, because uh, the leaders, apart from Mudavadi, uh, Kalonzo Musioka and Raila, especially Raila, said that uh, the selection of the leader for either majority or minority in the Senate is determined by the senators themselves. So the senators sat down and decided that instead of Wetangula, or, or, or in this case Moses Masika, being the leader of the ma ma minority, the senators sat down and decided that uh, James Orengo was to be the leader of minority. Big mistake, big mistake, bigger than even Raila going to Bungoma and saying shame on you. Because uh, Wetangula said that uh, the divorce will be messy and noisy. And if you can see, it is uh, Bungoma that flipped that happened that. Finally, finally, we are talking about Tawe movement. I have to say it, my own observation is that there is no difference, there is no political difference between Wetangula and uh, Natembea. Natembea is, uh, has only made a realization that in Kenya, uh, the person, it's just like uh, lions in the forest. When the lion, when, the, when a, a male cub grows up, uh, it takes its own time and tries to push. It is a deadly matter. If it, force, it faces the lion in the, in the den, one has to die. And uh, if the young one, that is why they say Simba Kula Nyas, they, you know, the lioness are the ones that hunt, but when they have hunted, they give the lion the meat. But once the young uh, cub has become powerful and chased away the old lion, the old lion goes and it has nothing to eat, it eats grass and dies. So that is why in politics, you can even see, Raila never, was never handed over his fathers. He had to fight, he had to fight Kina Orengo, he had to fight Kina Wamalwa and whatever, and grab it. And that is what Natembea is doing. Very, very last word, you had the name Natembea. How does the name Natembea come in? And Natembea sounds like the Swahili word of saying, walking. My aunt, the sister to my father, was married to somebody called Natembea. But they are not related to Natembea, this one. But uh, if you look at my cousin's ID, the IDs are written Wasike Wasike. So I happen to, I happen to ask other people around, why do people refer to my uncle or my aunt's husband, my aunt's widower? Why are they referring to my, my aunt's widower as Natembea? Uh, but he's Wasike. Then I was told that uh, Natembea, when uh, we used to have settlers here, uh, the settler would leave Africans doing their work in the farm, but there was one who used to kulanjaro. There was one who used to kulanjaro and disappear. So he, he would look at the Muzungu and know when the Muzungu appears and reappears. So when he knows that, then he makes a plan that uh, he can, when the Muzungu is not around, immediately Muzungu leaves, he leaves. Then immediately he comes, he times that he knows that the Muzungu will come back at such a time. Then he comes back a few minutes before the Muzungu comes. Then the Muzungu thinks that he has been working. But in such cases, Wazungus could come back abruptly and find somebody is not there. So the Muzungu would quarrel him, say, Kazi yako tu natembea, 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 natembea. So you find that uh, Natembea's father and my late uncle, who was a widower, who was a widower to my aunt, uh, used to work for the Wazungus in Kitale, and whenever Wazungu were not around, they 
kula njaro. They would kula njaro, and when the mzungu comes and finds they are not there, and then we, when the mzungu stays around and you come back at the time when you expected the mzungu to, to find you, that is the time you, you, you find that um, mzungu starts saying, wewe kazi yako tu, natembea, natembea, natembea. That is the origin of the name Natembe. It is not there in the original names of the Bukusus. Over 90% of Bukusus names start with, if it is a male, it starts with W. Wekesa uh, wafula wanyonyi. But if it is a lady, the name starts with N. Nekesa nafula nasimiyo. And so on. So that briefly is what I wanted to say.